in the headlines. Court in Kano remands killer of Little Hanifa Abubakar in prison. Police in Brno arrest four suspects for assaulting lady critical of lawmaker on Facebook. Parents and students of GFC Aori recount ordeal in bandits' captivity. And on the foreign scene, protesters gather in support of Burkina Faso's mutinies in Ouagadougou. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Dashan Hosseina Usman. Now the news in detail. Killer of five-year-old Hanifa Abubakar in Kano, Abdul Malik Tonko, has been arraigned before a magistrate court sitting at Gidam Murtala in the state's metropolis. The court remands Abdul Malik Tonko and two others accused in the kidnap and subsequent murder of the girl in prison custody. The presiding magistrate, Mohammed Jibrin, gave the order pending hearing on the case slated for 2nd February this year. Abdul Malik is standing trial for days after his arrest, four days after his arrest on allegation of kidnapping and killing of his school pupil, Hanifa Abubakar. Prosecution counsel and attorney general of Kano State, Lower Musa, said the court has graciously granted his application to remand the suspect in custody pending hearing. In all the cases, of course, we applied first of all for the FIR to be read to the understanding of the accused persons uh, in the language they understand, which was done. You were in court, uh, FIR was read, they understood the contents of the FIR. Of course, you know, uh, the magistrate courts, of course, do not have jurisdiction to try this case. But the essence of it is that, as you can see, the system. The police conducted investigation. They have finished with their investigation within the shortest possible time, and they brought the case directly to us. We cannot, by today or tomorrow, prepare the charge, and the police cannot continue to keep them in their custody because the law does not give them that power. So they have to bring them to court, and that is why they are here today. And as you have heard, uh, this case was adjourned to the second of February. Before then. We, by that time, the charge will have been ready. Of course, the magistrate agreed with our application, granted our application. We remanded them in prison. But before then, I assure you, the charges will have been out and uh, we will take them to the proper court. In the same vein, aggrieved youths in Kano have set ablaze Noble Kids Nazrian Primary School, the school whose proprietor Abdul Malik Mohammed confessed to kidnapping and killing his five year old student, Hanifa Abubakar. The school located in Kawaji, Nasarawa local government area, is set up in flames when the angry youths torched it. The state's government had ordered closure of the school building rented by the suspected killer of, the, of little Anifa pending investigation and prosecution. It is not clear whether the motive of attackers is to take revenge on property of the suspects involved in the murder or anything related to them. A parent and student of uh, Federal Government College, Bernie Niauri, recently released from captivity, recount their ordeal in the hands of bandits exclusively to Trust TV. Over 30 students were abducted in June last year. The report. My name is Sander Muhammad, chairman of the abducted Yauri school children. When the abduction took place, we took it to be a test for us as parents and the entire government of Kebi State. If not for this attack, I've never seen this kind of abduction in Kebi State. This attack happened in Kagara about three to five times. But God has shown us that he is all-sufficient and does as he pleases, and no one can stop him. We were troubled indeed, especially in the first three months. Only the courageous can endure this. Some parents have even lost their lives. That day on Thursday, in the morning, when they finished the last paper, then, then we are seeing the people coming with bike. Everybody we dress like soldiers. So everybody are thinking is soldier. Then where we were coming from to get then they started shooting places. 
then people started when people started learning. Then some people hiding in this big exam hall. Then people come and fight all the people. Then we have we go with them. Come after they take us, they started going with like to Zampala. I'm feeling very clear but even now I'm thinking something like when I'm coming my father has died. Security operatives have repelled two separate attacks in Kucheri along Safi Funtua's Zaria Road at the Mareri area of Gisau Metropolis, where suspected bandits invaded the community and abducted the managing director of Zamfara State Transport Authority, Aminu Papa, last Saturday. The State Commissioner for Information, Ibrahim Dosara, and his colleague from Internal Security and Home Affairs, Mumman Zafi, confirmed this while addressing journalists on efforts made by the state government to end the insecurity bedeviling the state. However, the collective efforts of the security operatives and that of Vigilante rescued the abducted person. The report. Zamfara State Government said it is putting efforts in place to rid the state of terrorists and ensure peaceful and secure environment for residents in the state, which is manifesting with several terrorists neutralized by security operatives, including the rescue of 2,115 abducted victims from captivity. The Commissioner emphasized the need for all hands to be on deck towards ensuring the success of the state government's commitment to eliminate the terrorists and bring about peace in the state. We shall not remain complacent in the face of these challenges. Henceforth, the need to put all hands on deck to ensure the success of our commitment to serve our people if they go better. His Excellency briefed the President on the security situation in the state and the efforts his administration is doing to address the rampage of lean bandits who are now more than ever before being frustrated and which leads uh, the bandits to uh, viciously attacking communities as they flee from the fire, I mean firepower of our gallant security operatives. Upon the visit Mr. President was briefed of the last visit to the Niger Republic by His Excellency Dr. Pedro Mohamed Matolda Moradin Shetim on Sokoto Bordan Hausa, where the President immediately directed our amiable governor to return to Niger Republic to conclude this remarkable mission of peace. On the positive of manpower and uh, in the worst situation the tendency is that manpower will suffer a lot of overstretch but as far as the government is concerned of recent you have observed the commander in chief president Muhammad Bahari has given the go ahead for the due mobilization of about 10,000 uh, policemen which, and uh, also further mobilization of the Nigerian army on various levels. Remember His Excellency Dr. Bello Mohammed Matolda Moradu took personal interest to go to the recruitment camp and trust himself with the other to be recruited and that there was mass mobilization of our men into the Nigerian army and into the police. So while there is this a fact that there is the problem of manpower, mm -hmm. the government is also energizing all its efforts to make sure that that deficit is taken care of by a large number of our team youth who, are, who have the energy, who have the strength. On the recent reopening of schools in Zamfara State after the five months closure, they said Governor Bella Mohammed has directed the Ministry of Education to immediately recruit 110 teachers to conduct extra lessons for the students to cover the lost period. 
adding that security operatives have degraded the suspected terrorists, which necessitated the reopening of schools classified as green and yellow in Zamfara State. So we have 200 schools, secondary schools for eight. And out of these 200, we have 85 classified as red. We have 75 classified as green. Then we have 40 classified as yellow. Now the yellow and the green are the ones we open. As for the red schools, we are waiting for some time as the situation improves. We shall look into the possibility of the opening them too. I hope you are satisfied. Police in Maiduguri, Borno State, say four suspects behind the assault of one Fadila Abdurrahman for posting a critic video of House of Reps member Ahmed Satomi on social media have been arrested. Police in the state say operatives are hunting for other persons who participated in the assault of the lady. The report. Two days ago, Fadila Abdurrahman posted a critic picture of the House of Rep member Engineer Ahmed Satome on Facebook. The post, which went viral, sparked some talks to lynch their anger on her. A viral video of the assault went round on social media. <laughs> and her restaurant situated at the Sanda Kiarimi Zoo Park was demolished. The Borno State Police Command at a press briefing paraded four suspects involved in the assault. The Commissioner of Police, Abdul Umar, said it's handling a case of toggery, criminal conspiracy, mischief, possession of dangerous weapons and assault. Alleged that they were engaged by one Saadu Suleiman alias Manu Nakande and invaded Zahura restaurant in a Meduguri amusement park where Fadila Ibrahim, 29 years old and equally a member of the police public relation, was attacked, beaten up, and subsequently her restaurant was destroyed. A handset value yet unknown was cut away, but merely for the purpose, as alleged, that she circulated on social media an image and writings undermining the integrity of their master, the member of the federal constituency, as alleged. We are equally having suspects who are at large, which include the actual uh, principal suspect who engaged this uh, culprit uh, to go and perpetrate this uh, nefarious act. Meanwhile, the House of Rep member of Jerry Federal Constituency Engineer Ahmed Satume in a press release distanced himself from the incident. Police in Imo State have raided a camp suspected to be an operational base of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra and its militant wing, Eastern Security Network, killing one bandit in the process. Police Public Relations Officer, CSP Mike Abatam, who confirmed this sad news, or this news, said the camp is located at Onicha in Izinihite, Mbesi local government area of the state. He said raiding of the camp followed credible information that some members of the IPOB and ESN terror group, its militia wing, have made the forest the operational base, and from there they go out to perpetrate heinous crimes, which includes terrorism, kidnapping, armed robbery, and killing of innocent citizens. He added that the hoodlums on site in the police operatives opened fire on them, while the police operatives swiftly returned the fire and in the fierce gun battle killed one of the hoodlums, while others scampered into the adjoining bushes, fatally injured with gunshot injuries. 
Some of the items recovered include one AK-47 rifle with 40 rounds of live ammunition, 10 locally fabricated explosive devices, one police hand grenade, two Toyota Highlander Jeeps, one Lexus 350 SUV without registration number, among others. Police in Jagawa State are investigating the surrounding circumstances surrounding the killing of its personnel and abduction of a son-in-law to a popular businessman, Haruna Meifata, in Jagawa State. The police spokesperson in Jagawa, Lawang Adam, confirmed the incident to reporters, assuring that efforts are being intensified by the police to effect the arrest of the fleeing suspects. The affected police personnel reportedly lost their lives while trying to repel the kidnap attempt on the son-in-law to Meifata, who is a popular contractor with the state government. The incident occurred on Quellum, one of the populous communities in Tora local government area of the state where the contractor lives. Without the kidnap, however, the kidnappers successfully abducted Ma'aru Abubakar, son-in-law to the contractor. The spokesman identified the deceased officers as Anas Husseini, a superintendent of police, and Sanusi Al Hassan, an inspector, narrating that the officers were shot dead close to an improvised patrol vehicle set ablaze by the gunmen. You're watching Trust TV News Update coming up after the break. Hazards of food supplements. Do stay with us. Coronavirus disease, COVID-19, is an infectious disease caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus. Most people who fall sick with COVID-19 will experience mild to moderate symptoms and recover without special treatment. However, some will become seriously ill and require medical attention. The virus can spread from an infected person's mouth or nose in small liquid particles when they cough, sneeze, speak, sing, or breathe. These particles range from larger respiratory droplets to smaller aerosols. You can be infected by breathing in the virus if you're near someone who has COVID-19 or by touching a contaminated surface and then touching your eyes, nose, or mouth. The virus spreads more easily indoors and in crowded settings. Maintain a safe distance from others at least two meters even if they don't appear to be sick. Wear a mask in public, especially indoors or when physical distancing is not possible. Clean your hands often. Use soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Cover your nose and mouth with your bent elbow or a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Stay home if you feel unwell. Get vaccinated. Properly fitted masks can help prevent the spread of the virus from the person wearing the mask to others. Masks alone do not protect against COVID-19 and should be combined with physical distancing and hand hygiene. Protect yourself and others around you by knowing the facts and taking appropriate precautions. Follow advice provided by your local health authority. This message is brought to you by Trust TV. Welcome back. You're still watching Trust TV News Updates. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. You heard that killer of five-year-old Hanif Abubakar in Kano, Abdul Malik Tonko, has been arraigned before a magistrate court sitting at Gudamutala in the state's metropolis. Plus, police in Maiduguri, Brno State, say four suspects behind the assault of one Fadil Abdurrahman for posting a critic video of House of Representatives member Ahmed Satomi on social media has been arrested. Moving on to more news, Nigeria Center for Disease Control says 228 cases were recorded in 13 states and the federal capital territory, Abuja. According to the agency's records, 462 persons were discharged after recovering from the infection with no fatalities on Sunday, leaving the total number of deaths at 3,124. 
So far, 252,187 cases have been confirmed with 226,408 recoveries. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization says Omicron variant has moved the COVID-19 pandemic into a new phase and could bring it to an end in Europe. Association of Poultry Farmers in Kaduna says avian influenza, also known as bird flu, that has killed many birds in the state few weeks ago is now under control. Chairman of the association in the state, Musa Bala, said this in an exclusive interview with Trust TV in Kaduna. There was a general weakness of the birds. They will stop uh, eating normal rate. Then they are calm, that is the, the red calm, they start swelling up, changing color to black. And the, the, the leaves under their distance can also change color. And the biggest and the worst sign is they are usually mass mortality. You will see them dying in numbers without control. There's nothing that can stop it. Once there's that an outbreak, there's nothing that can stop it. So once you notice uh, weakness, general weakness of the beds, all of them, and they were not eating as before, then there's a big sign of uh, e uh, effect of bed flow in there. It affected the poultry business. We have people now that uh, distance themselves from poultry product, from the eggs and the broiler's meat. Once there's uh, an outbreak of uh, avian influenza, uh, despite the fact that some people might start rushing for the meat, probably because it's cheaper, but I can tell you categorically that my association, in conjunction with the uh, Minister of Health and Agri, we made it clear that selling such meat by any farm owner is a criminal offence because of the disease it carries. And uh, we want to call on farmers that uh, poultry remain the only agri business area where if there is an outbreak, the federal government and the state government compensate the farmers. When I say compensation, I don't mean to say that you'll be paid 100% when there's compensation. And any poultry farmer know that uh, there's risks that we carry. Part of the highest risk we carry is the outbreak of this disease or failure of vaccines. So we should do our business with utmost fear of God and uh, refuse to sell affected birds to the public because the money cannot be good for us. And anybody who do that is liable to, you know, prosecution by the regulatory authority. Online advertising is increasingly becoming the norm and important for business owners and service providers across the world. In comparison to offline, internet or online advertising is cheaper and can reach many potential clients. Among products that are often advertised are food, supplements and other medication with promises of effectiveness and no side effects. However, in an interview with Trust TV, a pharmacist at the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development, Ibrahim Lowell, says consumption and overconsumption of these supplements poses danger. Food supplements, as the name implies, uh, bio biological ingredients that are meant to supplement or augment the, uh, the, the ingredients lacking rather sometimes vitamins lacking or enzymes, coenzymes lacking in the regular food we eat. That's the whole idea about food supplements. Mm -hmm. Food supplements cannot be called a drug. Just like I said, food supplements cannot be used for diagnosis, they cannot be used for treatment, they cannot be used for prevention. It should be quoted rightly. As the name implies, they are minerals, coenzymes that supplement for what is lacking in your food. So they cannot be classified as drug. That's why in the US, the FDA does not regulate food supplements. Most of the food supplements you see imported, you see that this claim has not been verified by the FDA. That's why I said you should be careful and watch out for people that will tell you it can substitute for your prescription medication. Food supplements cannot. It's just like telling you, okay, eat, uh, the food you're eating can substitute for the drug you're taking. 
it, it's, it doesn't make sense anywhere. Right. And um, people should be careful combining prescription medication and food supplement. In, in, in uh, pharmacology, there's something we call food drug interaction. I believe you've, uh, you've been to the pharmacy and they told you don't take your anti-malaria with vitamin C or don't take your milk with your antibiotic. They have their own reasons. That's because one can hamper the other or it can affect an organ in your body. Civil rights activist and former Senator Sheh Hosani says autonomy for state, legislature, judiciary and local government will improve democratic ideals at the grassroots level in the country. Sani said this during a meeting with PDP members in the Kaduna State House of Assembly. He said that PDP is strong enough to wrestle power from the hands of ruling APC in 2023 elections. I appreciate you for your struggle for autonomy not just for legislature but for judiciary and the local government and i believe that it is only when the state legislature is autonomous that we will have real democracy at the grassroots level and your election and your presence in the state parliament is a testimony of your resilience, your determination, your commitment, and also your people's orientation as parliamentarian and legislators. By your presence in the State Assembly, you have proven in no mean term that the People's Democratic Party is strongly present in Kaduna State. <laughs> Elected officials are the symbols of the life of a party. By your presence, it shows that all those who think that PDP does not exist are simply speaking the untruth about the reality in Kaduna State. For the fact that you have been able to withstand the tsunami of change, for the fact that you are able to withstand all storms and turbulence over the years and win your elections and represent your people strongly is a testimony that there is hope for this party in this state. Kaduna is a peculiar state in Nigeria and particularly in the northern part of Nigeria. On the international scene, protesters gather in Ouagadougou in support of the country's mutinous troops after soldiers arrested President Rook Mark Christian Kabore and detained him in army barracks a day after staging an uprising. Mutinous soldiers say the government is disconnected from its forces in the field, adding that they want military rule. News of Kabore's detention on Monday comes a day after soldiers stage mutinies at several army barracks, prompting fears of a coup. Later on Sunday, heavy gunfire was also heard near Kabore's residence in the capital, Ouagadougou. On Monday morning, several armored vehicles from the presidential fleet riddled with bullets could be seen near the residence. There is no immediate comment by the government, which on Sunday had denied what a coup was, that a coup was underway. Reports say talks between representatives of the soldiers and Defense Minister General Bartholomew Simpore failed to make headway. And with that, we wrap up Trust TV News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashen Hussein Usman. Thanks for watching.